When you feel that geek impulse to buy something or to do something uh, before thinking about it, you just want to go, 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 there's a couple of proverbs worth considering. I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. Right now I'm going to attempt to examine the Bible and dissect some of the churchy language we can easily take for granted, digging into history and languages as I'm able anyway to try and get at the heart of the text so that we can hopefully see and then apply at least some of what God has for you and me in these words today. Now, I'm not formally trained in scripture. I'm just a guy using resources and a questioning mind to try and get at the truth, and that's something that we can all do. So I would love it if you did that with me. We've been making our way through the book of Proverbs and have arrived at chapter 11, verses 18 and 19 in the ESV that reads, The wicked earns deceptive wages, but one who sows righteousness gets a sure reward. Whoever is steadfast in righteousness will live but he who pursues evil will die. There's arguably a small thematic connection between these two proverbs, both having a basic structure of the harmful outcome of sin versus the good outcome of righteousness. I'll spend more time on verse 18 and then briefly show that the same principles are present in verse 19 and make some summary comments about both. Uh, 18 again, the wicked earns deceptive wages, but one who sows righteousness gets a sure reward. Like many Proverbs, this one takes, I think, some reflecting on to understand what it's getting at, and specifically reflecting on it in light of other more clear scripture relevant to its topic, which in general is a a vital part of any scriptural interpretation. Wicked, I think, is pretty straightforward. We've run across that word a number of times in our study, but what is meant by the phrase deceptive wages? The Hebrew for deceptive is about what you would expect, deception, falsehood, fraudulence, but it also carries the idea of disappointment, being less than it is thought to be. So who are the wages deceiving? Well, I think it's the wicked themselves that are earning these deceptive wages. They believe their sinful actions will result in a particular positive outcome for themselves, but they don't realize the outcome is going to be different than the good thing they expect. Wages resulting from sin is a metaphor used again by the Hebrew scholar and former Pharisee Paul, the apostle. In Romans 6.23, he writes, The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The sinful path usually looks like a way to get something that we want. And it may be that we get that thing that we're after, but the sin we commit in the process creates a less obvious outcome we do not want and tend not to see coming. For those who live apart from God and never seek forgiveness and reconciliation with him, they deceive themselves into being forever separated from God and separated from all the good that he wants to give them. And uh, before the end of their lives, they experience usually other consequences of sin, increasingly self-sabotaging their lives and maybe even shortening their lifespans. Their, their lifespans. Now, as Christians, it's important to say we are not immune to the deceptive wages of sin. Although because of Christ, we have forgiveness and eternal life, as we deceive ourselves into taking sinful paths, we suffer the loss of of some eternal rewards we would otherwise be given in heaven and may also self-sabotage or even shorten our lives now. It's worth being aware that as geeks we are trained by marketing, by hype, to pull the trigger on instant gratification without first considering if that would be a decision that we're really putting before the Lord to be in submission to Him in harmony with His will for us. It's so easy to let hype or the fear of missing out take over and push aside the things God wants us to be considering before making a purchase. Maybe that purchase is fine and God honoring, or maybe not. Or maybe he wants us to wait until some other things in our lives have been prioritized first. When hype is strong, waiting to try and and discern that we're in line with God's will can be very difficult. Uh, But that's what being in line with God's will often involves. In fact, it always involves some degree of waiting for an outcome. The alternative to the wicked path here is to sow righteousness, an agricultural metaphor that suggests this present investment of effort now into something unrecognized for the good that it will do or become. Seeds 
are, are sown, they're buried under soil, and they're unseen until much later when they grow, and then even much longer after that, when they produce something. Um, that's what the righteous path will feel like. Nothing has gone wrong if we do the right thing and don't immediately feel great and experience reward from it. Sometimes that happens, but the norm is, is not that for that to be the case. The, the true fruit of the righteous path comes later, sometimes partially in this life, many times not until our resurrection. But the reward is a sure one, we are told here. We can count on it. Paul illustrates these two paths for the Christian and what the eternal outcome looks like in 1 Corinthians 3, 12 through 15, as Paul talks about Jesus being the foundation of his life ministry, he says, now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest for the day will disclose it. And that's a, that's a metaphor there for the day of God's judgment. Uh, that day is going to disclose the true nature of all of the works that we do in life. Uh, he goes on to say, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. As believers, we can be confident in having the gift of eternal life. But what we do, the paths that we choose in this life, still have a major impact on what comes after this life for us. And rather than the deceptive wages that look good and are right in front of us, we are called to trust that patiently investing in righteous living, righteous choices now, will yield results that are every bit worth it in the resurrection. Verse 19 has similar ideas, but more directly ties them to life and death. Uh, 19 again says, Whoever is steadfast in righteousness will live, but he who pursues evil will die. So these are two really courses of ongoing behavior being described. Steadfastness speaks to uh, this consistency, and pursuing suggests this ongoing chase. So both of these ongoing courses... As we've noted before, obedience to God tends to bring about blessing and longevity, although it's not a guarantee. Similarly, sin tends to shorten our lifespans. And the ideas of life and death here are also applicable to our eternal state, although that would be a secondary meaning, and the wording here shouldn't be pressed for details about how one obtains eternal life. Uh, so mostly I think that's talking about what's going to tend to happen in this life right now. Whoever is steadfast in righteousness will live, but he who pursue, pursues evil will die. In summary, whether we're reflecting on our eternal state uh, or, or our life lived here and now, um, pursuing the path God wants for us, moment by moment and also over the long term, results in vibrant, full, rich, and meaningful life. And a path pursuing our selfish desires without submission to God does not result in what we think it will. It causes us to miss out on the gifts that God wants to give us, and it can even destroy us in multiple ways. For more chat about geek entertainment, answers to your questions, and news from the wider world of Christian geekery, get the Christian Geek Central podcast today on iTunes and other podcast services.